Good day, everyone. Welcome to our new episode of Practice Problems. This is the third part of Patterns and Sequences. Let's proceed to the questions. Determine the general term of the following sequences. Um, general term meaning the end term, the formula, or the rule. So we're basically going to create a formula that will define the following sequences. Let's start with number one. The very first thing you do in answering this kind of question is see if there is a common difference between the terms. So that's the very basic. Let's check if there is a common difference on that. So now in this case, uh, answering this one, uh, this method, the, the method I'll be teaching you in this one is applicable only if you have a common difference on your first try. What, did, what does I mean with the first try? I will try to get a common difference first between terms. So meaning 7 minus 4, that is 3. 10 minus 7, that is 3. 13 minus 10 is 3. And 16 minus 13 is 3. So I get a common difference or a common number on my first try. So therefore, this method that I'll be teaching you is, is the one that we're going to use or applicable in this kind of theory or kind of sequence. So if we identify the terms. We have our first term, a sub 1, second term, a sub 2, third term, a sub 3, a sub 4, and a sub 5. So we know that the common difference is 3, so we will put an initial rule or an initial general term like this, wherein a sub n is equal to the 3, the common difference that we get, multiplied by n. Now let's try to substitute to find a sub 1, a sub 2, a sub 3, a sub 4. And let's see if we're going to get the, the sequence 4, 7, 10, 13, and 6, 15. Now, if I try a sub 1, I get 3. Because all I have to do is substitute 1 to n. 3 times 1 is 3. Then if I, if I, if I try a sub 2, that would be 6. Substitute 2 to the n because we're getting the second term, we have 6. a sub 3, again. Let's substitute 3 to n, that is 9, and 4, a sub 4 is 12, and a sub 5 is 15. As you can see, our initial formula doesn't give us the value of our sequence. So it's different. These are different sequence from this. Now it's time for us to adjust our formula. Now ask yourself, what are you going to do to 3 to make it 4? Now that's the way we adjust it. So, common sense dictates that in order for 3 to become 4, we need to add 1 on it. So, 3 plus 1 is 4. Then, let's see if that fits the other sequence. If adding 1 will fit uh, other terms in the sequence. So, let's try 6 plus 1, that's 7. That is checked. 4, 7. Let's try 9 plus 1, that is 10. That is checked again. We have 12 plus 1, that is 13. That is correct again. And 15 plus 1, that is 16. So we all we we know that if we add 1 to, to each term, we can get the value 4, 7, 10, 13, 16, which is our, our sequence. So it tells us that our, our initial formula, we should add 1 to it. So that would give us 3n plus 1. So this is the answer for this question. So the general term for this sequence is 3n plus 1. Let's try another example. Again, let's check if it has a common difference on first try. 13 minus 2 is 11. 24 minus 10 is 11 as well. 35 minus 24 is 11. 46 minus 35 is 11. This has a common difference on our first try. So these are the very basic. Again, let's write our initial formula, which is a sub n is equal to 11 multiplied to n. That's the very very that's the very first step. So now let's let's try to evaluate a sub one, a sub two, a sub three, a sub four. So as you can see, we have the following results: 11, 22, 33, 44, 55. It's way far far compared to our sequence. Now again, like considering a sub one, how can we we turn 11 into 2. 
what are we going to do to 11 to make it? Again, uh, if you're going to think of it, you need to subtract 9 from 11 to make it 2. So 11 minus 9 is 2. Now let's try it to the other other terms. 22 minus 9 is 13. 33 minus 9 is 24. 44 minus 9 is 35. And 55 minus 9 is 46. Now we get that the terms of our sequence. Now we can see that by subtracting 9 to the initial formula, we will we'll be generating the general term. So that is a sub n is equal to 11n minus 9. So this is true for all of the terms of this sequence. Now let's go to the third example. Now we're dealing with negative numbers or the descending kind of, of sequence. Again, the very first thing you do is to check if there is a common difference on first try, on second try, and so on. So again, uh, this is a sub 5. I'm sorry, it's not a line. So negative 4 minus 2 is negative 6. Then negative 10 minus negative 4 is negative 6. This is negative 6 as well. And negative 6. You can see there is a common difference on the first try. But in this case, it's negative 6. So again, let's do, let's create an initial formula where a sub n is equal to, to our common difference, negative 6, multiplied by n. So let's try to evaluate the first term, the second term, the third term, the fourth term, and the fifth term. Now, as you can see, uh, negative 6 comes in our first term instead of 2. Now, what are we going to, neg to do to negative 6 to make it 2? So, if you think of it, you need to add 8 to it to make it positive. Negative 6 plus 8 is positive 2. Negative 12 plus 8 is negative 4. Negative 18 plus 8 is negative 10. Negative 24 plus 8 is negative 16. And negative 30 plus 8 is negative 22. So, now... That's the common that's the common that's the constant that we're going to add to our initial term to get the formula. So that is a sub n is equal to negative six n plus eight. So that's our answer for number three. Now let's go to problem number four. One one over five, a one, five over three, seven over three. 3 and 11 over 3. Now, to make it easier, let's just transform this first, this sequence, into a term wherein they have similar denominator. So let's have that. Let's get 3 to have a similar denominator. 1 is equal to 3 over 3 because 3 divided by 3 is 1. Well, 3 is, divided by, is equal to 9 over 3 because 9 divided by 3 is 3. So, in this case, I'll be getting, I'll much, it will be much easier for us to get or to see if there is a common difference. Now, let's see if, if there is a common difference. 5 over 3 minus 3 over 3 is 2 over 3. 7 over 3 minus 5 over 3 is 2 over 3 as well. 9 minus 7 is 2 over 3. 11 minus 9 is 2 over 3. So therefore, the common difference at first try is 2 over 3. So it's good to, it's good to do the things that we're doing a while ago. So we have 2 over 3 times n because these 2 over 3 is our common difference on first try. After that, let's evaluate all of the numbers. Now, be careful on evaluating it because you might have problem on evaluating it. But to recall it, all you have to do is to multiply 1 to 2, so that is 2 over 3. 2 times 2, that is 4 over 3. 3 times 2, that is 6 over 3. And 4 times 2, that is 8 over 3. And 5 times 2, that is 10 over 3. Now, as you can see, our first term is not yet 3 over 3. So what are we going to do to 2 over 3 to make it 3 over 3? So if you think hard, you get, you notice that you need to add 1 to it to make it 1 over 3 to 8 to make it 3 over 3 or 1. 
So now let's try to do it on the other terms. 5 over 3. That is 7 over 3. That is 9 over 3. And that is 11 over 3. So all we have to do to, to is to add 1 over 3 to our initial formula. So we have this as our answer. Okay. If you want, you could simplify it by using by doing this to n plus 1 over 3 either or is correct okay so now we're done with that kind of problem now let's see what our challenge what challenges can number five can bring us now 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 let's try to get the common difference of number one in number of uh, number five at first try 7 minus 4 is 3, 12 minus 7 is 5, 9 minus 12 is 7. So as you can see, there is no common difference on our first try. Don't do so. Let's try it again on the second time. 5 minus 3 is 2, 7 minus 5 is 2. So you get the common difference on your second try. So we will not use the same, the same method that we use on our in our in numbers in items one to four so what we're going to do here is to get this common difference and divide it into two uh just get the common difference the second time and they always divide it into two so we have two over two that is one now since that we get it on the second try we will put one next to n squared remember where here is n on the second try, you will use n squared. But you need to divide first the common difference into two. So now we have this as our initial formula. Now let's try to substitute all of the terms to, to get it. Let's see a sub 1. That is 1 times 1 raised to 1 is 1. Multiplied by 1 is 1. 2 raised to 2 is 4 times 1 is 4. Then 3 times 3 is 9 times 1 is 9. 4 times 4 is 16, times 1 is 16. As you can see, it is not yet similar to our terms in our sequence. Now it's time for us to adjust. What are we going to do to 1 to make it to make it 4? So all you have to do is to add 3 on it. Now let's check if that's the case on 2nd, 3rd, and 4th. 4 plus 3 is 7. 9 plus 3 is 12. And 16 plus 3 is 19. So we have this 3 as our constant number to be added. Now let's adjust our initial formula by adding it 3 and 2. So now we can get the formula of a sub n is equal to n squared plus 3. Take note that I didn't put 1 in here because it is un understood that there is 1 beside n. 1 doesn't change the value of n squared. Therefore, we don't need to write it or make it visible then. Now let's have an extra problem on it, the number 5. Again, same process. You need to subtract it. 10 minus 1 is 9. 25 minus 10 is how? 15. Then 46 minus 25 is... Five, 6 minus 5 is 1. 21. 21. 15 minus 9 is 6. 21 minus 15 is 6. Now we can see that there is a common difference on our second try, on our second degree. So all we have to do is to divide 6 into 2. 6 divided by the 2 is to 3. Then the answer is 3. Now let's put 3 beside n squared. So that's a sub n is equal to 3 n squared. Now let's try to... Substitute all. Now let's try to get a sub 1 to a sub 4 using that initial formula. Now we can see that we get 3, 12, 27, and 48. Now let's adjust the first term. What are we going to do to 3 to make it 1? Okay, what are we going to do to 3 to make it 1 and 12 to make it 10? Okay, to make 3 1, we need to subtract 2 from it. So. Let's continue the pattern and we can get the terms of our sequence. 
So to adjust the initial formula, we need to subtract to an n. So the answer is a sub n is equal to 3n squared minus 2. So that's for number 5. Now for number 6, it's kind of different from what we do on the first, on 5 and 6, on number 5. Now because if you see this, 10 minus 5 is 5, 8 minus, 18 minus 10 is 8, 29 minus 18 is 11. So let's see if we have another, and we have a common difference on second try. 8 minus 5 is 3, 11 minus 8 is 3. Now we have 3 on it. Now, 3 is not divisible by 2. Because if we divide 3 over 2, we'll get a fraction of 3 over 2 as well. So let's try to put that in our in our initial formula. Then let's try to evaluate it. Now 1 squared is 1, 1 squared is 1 times 3, that is 3 over 2. 2 squared is 4 times 3, that is 12. 3 squared is 9 times 3, that is 27. 4 squared is 16 times 3, that is 48. Now, this is the hard part is coming. We cannot adjust. If we're going to adjust 3 over 2 to make it 5, all we're going to do is to add 7 over 2. That would give us 10 over 2 or 5. Is 7 over 2 uh, applicable on the second term? Let's just plus 7 over 2. 12 plus 7 is 19 over 2. 19 over 2 is not equal to 10. So yeah, it's it's kind of hard to, to deal with this. But using trial and error, you can see that if you're going to add 1, 6 plus 1 over 2, we get 5. Because 3 plus 6 is 9 plus 1 is 10 divided by 2. That is 5. Now let's try what we're going to do to the next term. That is 12 plus 6 plus 2. That would be 20. And divided by 2, that would be 10. Now let's try on the third term. 6 plus 3, 9 plus 27. And that would be 36. 36 divided by 2, that is 18. On last number, we have 48 plus 6 plus 4. That would be 58. 58 divided by 2 is 29. Now, we cannot, we cannot just put this 1 into this. Because there are different numbers here. They are not the same. But we could change this, the value of this into n. Because what value of n are we going to put in here are the same. Uh, because what value we put in here is the same with the value of n that we use to substitute. So therefore, the general term for this is this. a sub n is equal to 3, n, 3 over 2 n squared plus 6 plus n over 2. If we're going to rewrite it in a, another way, we have 3 n squared plus n plus 6 over 2. Either of the following is correct. Okay. Question number seven. Uh, this method is applicable if the sequence has a common ratio. A while ago, we tried to subtract it. 9 minus 3 is 6. 27 minus 9 is 18. And 81 minus 27 is something that is not related to it. So 81 minus 27, 11, so 4. This will become 7 minus 54. So 18 minus 6, that would be 18 minus 6, that would be 12. Then 54 minus 18, that would be 6, 36. That would be 36. As you can see, there is no common, no common difference 
even on second try. Now, don't lose hope. After you do the, the first, after you try to get a common difference on first try, and on second try, and it, there's no common difference at all, now try to divide it. 9 divided by 3 is 3. 27 divided by 9 is 3. 81 divided by 27 is 3. This is a common ratio. When you divide the first term from the second term, and then you get the same numbers or same same quotient, then that would become, that is called common ratio. Now, to answer this problem or to create a formula or a general term or an end term for this, all you have to do is to multiply the first term, that is 3, to the common ratio raised to n minus 1. That's it. As you can see, 3 raised to 1 minus 1, which is 3 raised to 0. Any number raised to 0 is 1. So 3 times 1 is 3. 3 raised to 2 minus 1 is 1. So 3 raised to 1 is 3. 3 times 3 is 9. 3 raised to 3 minus 1 is 2. 3 raised to 2 is 9 times 3 is 27. Now 3 raised to 4 minus 1 or 3. 3 raised to 3 is 27 times 3 is 81. So that is how we we solve for a general term for it. Other tutorials in, in YouTube or in other videos or in other book just tell you to put 3 because that's the common ratio and put n here and squared it and squared it. I don't think so. What that's that's the case. I don't know. I they have they have their own oh three raised to n. So this is also correct. Three raised to one is three. Three raised to two is nine. Three raised to three, raised to three is twenty-seven, and three raised to four is eighty-one. Uh, I have nothing against it. it. This is also correct. A sub n is also three raised to n. It's also correct. But to have an organization that I can teach you, this one is also correct. It's up to you on what method you prepare. Now let's try this. Uh, this is an alternating sign. Obviously, it doesn't give you a common difference. So what you're going to do is to try to divide it. 10 divided, negative 10 divided by 2 is negative 5. 50 divided by negative, is negative 10 is negative 5 as well. Negative 250 divided by 50 is negative 5 as well. So we have a common ratio of negative 5. So again, the first term is 2 times negative 5 raised to n minus 1. And you'll get this as an answer. So the answer for this is a sub n is equal to 2 multiplied by negative 5 raised to n minus 1. How about this? It's descending, but uh, if you try to get the common difference, it doesn't have a common difference at first and at second. Now, all you have to do is to divide it. 8 divided by 16 is 1 half. 4 divided by 8 is 1 half. And 2 divided by 4 is 1 half. So now the common ratio is 1 half. So we have 16. That's the first term. Times 1 half raised to n minus 1. You might be confused on how to deal with fraction that has an exponent. All you have to do is to distribute that exponent to other numbers. This is 0. So 1 raised to 0 is 1. Then 2 raised to 0 is 1 as well. So 1 over 1 is 1. So 16 times 1 is 16. Now this is 1. 1 raised to 1 is 1. 2 raised to 1 is 2. So 16 times 1 half is 18. This is 2. So 1 raised to 2 is 1, 2 raised to 2 is 4. 16 times 1 fourth is 4. So this is 3, 1 raised to 3, and 2 raised to 3. 1 raised to 3 is 1, and 2 raised to 3 is 8. 16 times 1, 8 is equal to 2. So that gives us this kind of... Oops, I'm sorry. I forgot to change it. This should be... Let me get it back. This should be a sub n is equal to 16 multiplied by 1 half raised to n minus 1. Okay, I'm sorry for that mistake. So this is the final answer.
Now, let's go to question number 10. In the general term, uh, let's find the general term for the general term for it. Now, some sequence uh, to solve problem or to create a general term of some sequence. Uh, sometimes it will not give you a common difference on your first try, on your second try, and it won't give you a common ratio at all. But some some sequence are tends to answer by by trial and error or by guessing. Now, as you can see in this example, 1, 4, 9, 16, and 12 are perfect square. So what is how, how what what are you going to do to one to make to what is the square to one? That is one raised to two. What is four in terms of squared? That is two raised to two. This is three raised to two, four raised to two, and five raised to two. As you can see, you can now see this number one, two, three, four, five. That could constitute to our n. So we have n raised to two if n is equal to 1. So this could be our general term. So that would be our answer. So in this one, this is so easy if you have a keen, keen observation or keen understanding of things. Now let's go to 11. As you can see in 11, it's also a, can be answered through trial and error. Uh, we can see that the, four, the, the, the top one doesn't change, and the bottom ones are multiples of 7. So this is 7 times 1, 7 times 2, 7 times 3, 7 times 4. So instead of 7 times 1, I will just write 7 in. That's why I get this as, I, as my general term. So that's, that's the other way to show it. Okay, for our final number, we have this. This is a combination of, I think it has something to do, we need to change the numerator and the denominator. We need to work on it. I can see that the numerators are multiples of 2. So I can say 2n for the numerator. 2n. And on the bottom part, we have 7 minus 4 is... On the denominator part only, huh? 7 minus 4 is 3. This is 3 as well, and this is 3. So that is 3n. And what am I going to do to 3, 3n? 3 times 1 is equal to 3. What am I going to do to 3 to make it 4? So I will add 1. So 3n plus 1. So I see. So that will be our, my, our formula for this problem. Okay, so that's our solution and that's our checking so that's the answer for it so that's all for this problem it's kind of long but i hope everyone of you learn from this tutorial and learn how to get the general term or the end term or the rules of the sequence so hope you watch it and hope you share it. Give a like and subscribe to my channel. That's all for today. Goodbye and thank you.